Welcome to Life Talk, where we talk about the things that matter most in life. Once again, I have my mom, Sharon, joining me. And before we get into our topic today, I want to just take a couple of uh, moments just to share a few housekeeping things with you, if I could. Um, I don't even know if you realize this, but we have now done 25 episodes. So this makes our 26th episode, and I want to thank you for being a part of so many of those, especially the cooking episodes. Those do very well. Uh, we now have five cooking episodes. We have, um, we've talked about Young Living Oils. We've had guests on the program. We've covered some difficult topics. We've covered some health topics. And um, your testimony, uh, a lot of people have responded greatly to that. We've had her testimony and my story of being hearing impaired. And so if you have been enjoying this program, would you do us both a favor? As you know, this is currently a time that we're living in called the pandemic. And I've been out of work for I think it's seven months now, yeah. is that right? Seven months. And so with that, uh, we would like to know if you're enjoying this program, this is our way to stay connected with you. Would you please subscribe? Just hit the subscribe button right underneath this YouTube video. Uh, ring the bell for notification. Go ahead and like these videos and comment on them. You may not really understand what that does, but it actually helps distribution of the videos. When you like them, comment and share. And that helps me. So if you would do us that favor, I would greatly appreciate that. And I don't know when I'll be able to sing again. Um, I'm a singer for those who are just tuning in and don't know. I'm a national artist, recording artist, speaker, and singer talking about overcoming a hearing impairment and challenges in life. And you can check out that episode in a previous edition of Life Talk. But would you go ahead and consider booking me for 2021? We'd love to come to your church for women's conferences. My mother is a biblical counselor. We do women's conferences, singles conferences, uh, concerts, Christmas concerts, whatever, youth concerts uh, and events. So whatever you're looking for, we want to serve you. And for those who are asking really, what more can I do to help if you're already doing some of those things? I'm just going to throw this out at you. You can visit my website at SherryAnn.com and you can purchase any number of products. We design products just for Life Talk viewers. So we have mugs and what else do we have? Mugs, journals, journals and waste packs, pillows. So we've got a lot of fun stuff for you. Check that out at SherryAnn.com and also for those of you who are in a position of giving and would like to give, you can go to my website, go to my store page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's a place to give. If you're looking for a faster way to do it, just go to www.paypal.me forward slash Sherry Ann Ministries. Now, I will put the link down below and on this video so you will know exactly where to go. And we just want to thank you for that. And so check out those episodes, share them, like them, and let us know what you want to see on a future episode. We'd love to know. And with that, for this episode, my mother came to me and said that there was a message on her heart that she wanted to share with you. I have not even heard this message yet. So I am just going to open this program up to my mom, and I'm going to let her share this topic that's on her heart, I know it has to do with seeing God more clearly. That I know. And I think that the time that we're in, I think that's a critical message. So without any further ado, Mom, please share your message today. So while we were on the road traveling um, for Sherry Ann's ministry, one of the things we had the honor and privilege of doing was sitting in a service for Pastor David Locke. Locke. Yes, I remember. And... Um, I always enjoy hearing a good sermon, especially when we're out on the road, because a lot of the times we we are the sermon or we are the church, and so it's really we're ministering. <laughs> yeah, that day. it's really refreshing to sit down and get a good word. And David Locke, Pastor David Locke, gave a, a tremendous teaching, and I pulled a few pieces out for you today. Um, of what I thought really struck me and hit me. And I think it's so pertinent for today. Yeah. Um, and I think it's questions that people have today. And I also think it's difficulties that they're facing today. So, um, well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I'll do respect and credit to uh, Pastor David Locke. I hope that I can get some of these points across to you as he did to me. One of the things he was talking about is the fact that 
we don't usually recognize God and we don't usually see God the way that he would like us to see him. Hmm. Um, we allow our feelings to kind of dictate what we can't see beyond the problem that we're immediately facing. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we forget that God is greater than our problem and that he is our all sufficient savior. Mm -hmm. And there's such a struggle when, well, even the times we're in now to see God yeah. because of our feelings and because of our conflict and because of our circumstances, what happens is that becomes the focus. The circumstance, the problem, the conflict, coupled by our feelings, become the problem. And so we don't look to the God above the circumstance. We look directly at the circumstance, which creates a lot of discomfort. There's a meme. I know my mom's not active on Facebook, but there's a meme a lot of you may have seen that says, um, instead of telling uh, God how big your mountain is, tell your mountain how big your God is. And I think that's a little bit of what you're talking about. Right. And, you know, a lot of times we spend time worrying about our basics of life, which are challenged right now. Our basics mm -hmm. are very, very much challenged. We worry about how we're going to pay the bills, how we're going to buy our clothes, how we're going to fix the car, how we're going to continue to have our relationships, um, you know, functioning, um, and our dreams that just seem to have not become able to be fulfilled. And we begin to worry um, and worry. You know, the Lord talks to us so much about that in the scripture. That Be right anxious now. for nothing, yeah. worry for nothing. And he talks about in Matthew 6, I believe it is. Matthew 6, 31. Do not worry. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Yeah, and he talks about the birds and how he takes care of all those things. And feeds the birds. And if you, if you take care of the little baby sparrow, won't he take care of you? Who's right. created in his image. Right. But this is hard. It's hard for us, us to grasp. Um, when you're going through these things, um, as Sherry Ann said, she hasn't worked in seven months. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have, you know, we too have to hold on to what I'm talking about today. It promises. You know, and we have to be able to know that he is going to take care of us the way he takes care of the birds. You know, they don't worry about where they're going to get their food. As a matter of fact, I was watching a hummingbird the other day and they have to eat every hour. <laughs> in order to survive. I did I did research on them because I love hummingbirds and I've never seen anything so beautiful and so thick in all my life. But they were feeding on one of my flowers outside and I couldn't believe it. And so I looked up the information on them and they have to eat every hour in order not to die. Can, now how does that happen? How do they find food every hour? Yet they do. And they do. And yet they do. Yeah. Right? And that's be, and you probably wonder well why every hour? Because their their wings flap so fast that it takes so much so energy. Busy that they have to have the food to maintain. So I want to read this little passage to you. It's in uh, Mark, and it's chapter 8, and it's uh, in verse 22. So if I could read this for a minute. And they came to Bethesda, and some people brought to him a blind man, and they begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the village, and when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he said, Do you see anything? And the man looked up and said, well, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Mm -hmm. So that gives us some information that if he knew that people, it didn't, he knew he was seeing people, but they look like trees. He must have had some sight at one time in his life or he wouldn't have known what a tree looked like, right? So apparently he had it and lost it. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again and he opened his eyes and his sight was completely restored. And he saw everything clearly. So, this is one of the most unique miracles that Jesus ever performed. And the reason for that is because it was the only miracle that he performed that was in stages. I, I thought you were going to say that. Yes. I it see was that. In yeah. stages. And people say, well, now, why was that? Was it due to the fact that it was a really hard miracle for Jesus to perform? Was that why? Um, because really, we know that Jesus could have simply spoken, said, let there be sight, and the man would have seen. So it wasn't that. Um, 
but he goes through this process and he goes through this system, if you will. So the question is, what was the lesson? Mm -hmm. Why did he do that? And so we have to look at the fact, what is the application? The application here is that we too have this kind of blindness. We have spiritual blindness where we see in part. Mm. We don't see clearly yet. I mean, the scriptures are quick to say that we will see him clearly someday. But right now, we don't. And so that's significant of our own spiritual blindness. And when you have spiritual blindness, the only cure for that is Jesus. That's it. Jesus. There is no work that anybody or you can do to cure your spiritual blindness. You have to have him touch you. You have to have his blood-dripped hands touch you so that he can open your eyes so that you can see. So it's a process, and we have to go through a process. So when we're in these problems and we face these situations, we have to recognize that we, we may not see God through. I, I struggle myself sometimes with what we're going through and what my family's going through. And you see him, but you don't see him clearly. Yeah. You know, it's hard to see clearly. Like, I know you're there. Yeah. I know you're there. I know you will provide. I know you are my Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. but... My provider. Yeah, but I don't really see all of that right now. So we have to be able to know that as in the same way that Jesus healed this man in a process, it's the same fashion that our own here spiritual blindness will be open so that we can see God. Because when we come through this, which we will, then we will we'll, we'll be able to see where he was all along. And we can't see all that he's doing, but we have to know that he is doing. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we'll go, we go when we're not, when our spirits are not opened, when we're not born again, when we're not saved, we go from complete blindness, no sight. Mm -hmm. And then we, we get saved and we have partial sight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was happening here. He had partial sight, but then the scripture also says there is a time when we will see him fully. I'll read that. I was going to close with the scripture, but you've um, mentioned it twice now. And so I actually had that scripture to close with. So mm -hmm. how perfect is that? It's in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see him face to face. That's for it. now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Now this is in 1 Corinthians 13 which comes right after what's known as the love chapter. We've talked, it talks all about the characteristics of love. And then it goes on to say, right after that, we will know God fully when we see him face to face. And guess Amen. what? God is love. So when you know his attributes and you know his characteristics of love, then you begin to see God fully for who he is and you know he is with you and he is working all things for your good. Amen. That's another hard scripture. So... How do we grow in these stages? How do we go from no sight to partial sight to full sight? There's a few things that we have to go through in the process, and I'll help you understand what they are. The first thing is that you, you first of all, you have to be humble enough to mm -hmm. know that you need to grow. That's good. Right? Humble enough to know that you need to grow. Right? You first have to recognize that we're not all that in a bag of chips. Right? So we have to be humble and recognize that we need to grow. And every one of us is in need of serious growth. I don't care where we are in our walk with Christ. There's, you never graduate. This is not no. the school of graduation. We always have to know that we all need at all times serious growth. So that's the first thing. Um, and really, I think one of the drawbacks in that is that we tend to look around and compare ourselves with others and we think we've, we're farther along than that person and that's a real stumbling block because you really never compare yourself honestly you only compare yourself the way you want to see yourself like with somebody less than you so that you look better than absolutely and the second thing is that once you recognize that you need to grow once you accept that then you need to grow <laughs> then you need to do the work you need to Faith read. Is act it's an action word. Right. You need to read his word. You need to study. You need to be gracious to others. You need to show mercy. You need to grow to become Christ-like. 
and see Jesus for who he is so that we can take on that same character so that we can have full sight of him not only when we see him face to face but in each other mm -hmm. so you see that this miracle served as an illustration for the disciples temporary blindness and our own and and he will restore our sight completely but let me tell you another story quickly about the temporary blindness of the disciples. And I'm going to read another part of the passage to you in Mark um, 8. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the disciples were in the boat and they were traveling to the other side. And the Pharisees came along and began to argue with Christ. Mm -hmm. And they wanted him to give him a sign from heaven and all this and that. And Christ really, it said he sighed deeply in his spirit. Truly, he said, no sign will be given to this generation. Well, he gets in the boat and again, and he goes to the other side. And he says to his disciples, as, as, as he just got done with the Pharisees, he says, watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now you talk about a blindness. You know what they began to do? They began to talk about who, who we forgot the bread. All of a sudden, they take what Christ is trying to tell them about the Pharisees, leaven being their sin, leaven being their ritualistic ways, leaven being their pompous attitude. And what did the disciples do? They start talking about who brought the bread. We forgot the bread. We don't have any food. Let's talk about a spiritual blindness. And that's what the Lord is trying to help us to understand. I was, As I was reading this, I said to myself, they must have been Italian because we always focus on the food. But that's not where he was going. He wanted them to understand, beware of the sin of the Pharisees because sin has a ripple effect. You may not think it doesn't affect anybody, but it does. It, it, it's like a when you throw a pebble in the water, it has that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So you talk about a blindness, you see? And this is what we have some of the times then Christ wants to teach us certain lessons and Christ is talking about one thing and we're thinking about another. So it's really important that you understand the message that we have for today. And that message is your view of God will become your view of life. So open your eyes that you might see him fully, even though it's a process we go from no sight to partial sight to full sight. But know that that is our goal, to see him fully. I'll finish. I'm going to read that one more time. First Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as I am known. You know, uh, one of the songs I love to sing and get so much um, praise in concerts is just the closer walk with the daily walking close to thee. And I love that because it is a process of walking closer and closer with him. And we want to encourage you, like my mom said, to study the word, pray. That's a communication between you and God. So he hears your heart and you, you will be in tune with his heart. Pray, read the word of God. And faith is an action. Have faith. Believe in him. That's taking an action in your walk. It's not trusting in yourself. It's trusting in him. I did a devotional the other day where I said some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God even when you don't see it. Amen. Amen. And, and in conclusion for me, I want to just say to you that some of us think that our God is a good luck charm, that we turn to him when He need, we need help. And if he doesn't respond to us, then maybe he's not real. Maybe he doesn't exist. Some of us think it's we follow God because it's a tradition. It's what we were brought up in, and that's really all we know. It's like a ritual. And that's what he was warning the disciples about pertaining to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Some of us think it's just a good moral teaching so mm -hmm. that we would be, you know, good moral people. Some of us think it's a status symbol that we can attach to ourselves so others will think that we're good. You know, one of the things I... I see a lot today is that uh, the word Christian is a buzzword, you know. If uh, if you're perhaps dating and someone says, well, he's a Christian, 
it's a buzzword. It means, oh, okay, then then he's okay to date. But it's more than a buzzword, mm -hmm. you know? It's a, it's a belief, it's a lifestyle, it's, it's a faith walk. Yeah, they have to, you have to be able to see their Christianity, right? You have to open your eyes and be able to see their Christianity. And how do you do that? By opening your eyes and getting a good view of who of who God is. And that sight is only only granted by him. And his word is a great way to find out who he is because it's his spoken word to us. And what does it say in John? Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word became God. So this word, the word was with God. The word became God, Jesus walking here on earth. And we have his word for us to read. Absolutely. So one, humbly study God's word. Two, seek to develop your view of God through his word. Mm -hmm. Ask God to open your eyes that you might see his word in your heart. And recognize that the church and your spiritual life is not about fun. It's about your view of God, which will change your view of life. Amen. And with that, we want to thank all the pastors. Uh, we're releasing this in November, but October was Pastor Appreciation Month. And again, my mom shared that we got this sermon from a pastor that we heard. So pastors, all of you sharing the Word of God and helping people to see the Word of God, we thank each and every one of you. And thank you for those who have invited us into your church, into your homes, and into your lives. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Life Talk.